Hello everyone and welcome to this video series on how I developed an autonomous RC car. In the first part, I will show you all the components and basic concepts that I learned during one year of this project. My inspiration for this came from my interest in electric cars and autonomous systems, and nothing better to learn than doing an autonomous RC car. Let's say that you need to find a treasure in an island. First, you need a map. Second, you need to know your position on that map. And finally, you need to find a route to get to the treasure using your body, eyes, ears and brain to detect and avoid enemies and traps. Autonomous navigation uses the same concept. You have a map with a start point, which is an estimate of the position of your robot, and you need to find the best path to your goal using actuators and sensors to avoid the obstacles. By now, I said many keywords, such as map, localization, actuators, sensors, but in reality, what are those and how we can link all of that using a mobile robot? In my case, I had an off-road car from some fire that was controlled by radio frequency. The car had a DC motor to drive it and a servo motor to control the steering. I made a few updates to the car since I bought it 10 years ago, in which I changed the DC motor to a sensored brushless motor controlled by the famous VASC electronic speed controller. I will explain later why I did I choose these components, but I also bought a LiDAR from ID LiDAR and a Jetson Nano which is the embedded computer. Let me go quickly to each one of these components to get a microvision of the system. Our main board is the Jetson Nano. Connected to it, we have the LiDAR and the VASC. The LiDAR is just like your eyes, but instead of seeing color, it sees distance in three or two dimensions. In my case, since the budget is limited, I got a two-dimensional slider. They work by measuring the time that takes through a beam of light to go out of the laser and come back to the sensor. Since we know the speed of light, we can estimate the distance. To create a two-dimensional low-cost slider, most companies put a sensor on the base that rotates to get measurements from all 360 degrees. In my case, the slider can rotate at a speed ranging from 6 to 12 Hz and can read 5,000 beams of light per second. So with a simple math, we can say that if I use a speed of 7 Hz, I can get approximately 714 points per rotation, that gives me a resolution around 0.5 degrees. Also, lighters can have a maximum range of distance. Expensive ones can get more than 100 meters, but in my case, I can only read up to 10 meters. The VESC is responsible for controlling the brushless motor and also the servo. It can interface with PPM signals, UART, I2C, USB and CAN bus. In my case, I use USB serial to communicate with the Jetson Nano. I also have the brushless Hall effect sensor connected to the board. That gives me a better estimate of the velocity of the car that has an important role in the odometry that I will explain later. The VESC comes with a software that gives you all the freedom to do any type of customization in order to get the best performance of the motor. You can also configure settings for your battery, modes of control and inputs used. You can perform auto-tunes in a very helpful wizard which is a good start point to configure your motor. Now that I have talked about the sensor and the actuator, we need to join all of this together. But before that, I want to say a few points. This is not the first system that I had. I've been through some iterations of this project in which I used to have an encoder at the drive shaft, an Arduino DUI to read the encoder and also to control the signals through the ESC and the servo. I used to have a Razer IMU as well, and even a DRGB camera, which was the D435 real sets. But all of these were changing since I started to do some experiments and see which solution would work better. With all of that being said, I want to explain how I integrated all of these components to get to my objective. The best way that I found to do that for a beginner was to use ROS. ROS is the robotic operational system that is actually a framework that runs in Linux systems. It has lots of packages built by the community to help you develop any kind of robotic application. It also has a huge support for autonomous systems such as the one that I'm developing. Along with its multiple packages, I found one called the navigation package. As we can see in the image, this is the navigation stack that describes all the inputs, outputs and requirements 
in order for the RC car to get autonomous. In the next videos of this series, I will go over each one of these requirements and explain the methods that I use and the tools available for you to transform your robots into an autonomous system. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. I hope that you enjoyed, thank you.